share a, uh, a, you know, those shower time epiphanies that you get. So I was in the shower washing my hair, hence, once again, wet head. And um, I, uh, since I was kind of spaced out, uh, an issue I've been grappling with for a while kind of cemented together. And I wanted to share it with you. So a lot of you know how like a month ago, I went across country to help my friend Bernice, who uh, was under a lot of attack of like demons and uh, reptilians and near do wells. Anyway, um, and I've known Bernice for like, like my whole life. Um, so it was really strange because things were happening that just never happened. You know, like um, I would surround her with a golden orb of light. So anything that comes to that golden orb of light will either turn into their light self. So demons become, you know, like released or, you know, and return to the form they were before they made like questionable choices that took them down the road to demonhood or they just like they back away but like no matter what i did she kept being under attack and i'm talking hardcore serious attack it was really weird and um i would build you know i was visiting her for a couple of weeks because she's a lifelong friend i was building this network of light you know a grid of light with portals and stuff in her home and you know and i went deep into the land and deep up in all directions and and then like things would invade them it was weird i was like i'm i'm just absolutely confused um and when i left to come back home she hurled some really nasty, bizarre, out of left field accusations at me, claiming I was trying to like steal her husband from her, which like, <laughs> um, no, no, like all of my married friends and friends with significant others, don't worry, I will never go after your person ever her and there, there's no there was nothing I did that could be interpreted it was obviously a bogus excuse because she wanted to purposefully sever relations and I was confused because we've been friends you know for like close to 60 years this made no sense to me um so in the last month I've been doing a lot of introspection and searching and I was also I was exhausted you know, trying to force love and light where it just keeps falling apart, it's a futile effort. And I felt compelled to keep on. So in my time back here in recovery and talking with like my peers and mentors and going up and talking with the Guru Mandala and the Akashic Librarians and the Galactic Collective, uh, the Galactic and uh, Metatron came and basically gave me a gentle chiding of what are you doing? This is not working. And he literally withdrew all with all of his angel army. They went and I they had me watch as they went and withdrew all the energy grids and the network so that like Bernice is now like totally unprotected. Everything I did, spent two weeks doing, gone all the love, all the light gone. But once it was gone, I was able to see Bernice with clarity for the first time, not with the perspective of our, you know, nearly 60 years of friendship, but I was able to see how she never wanted the light. She just wanted me to be a battery feeding her energy while she actually did a lot of dark, shady stuff. Claiming was light, like going in and battling others and calling those she could battle to her so that she could triumph over them, claiming she was doing it for light, but really she just wanted to be like queen of hell. I mean, that's really what you get down to. So that was like a big lesson for me. I was like, how on earth could I be so hoodwinked by someone that 
that I've known for so long and I have so much love in my heart for. You know, for me, living in the resonance of truth and love is like, I don't even know like how to function outside of that. And I don't know why anyone would choose to. So um, I've been spending a lot of time the last couple of weeks in very deep meditative state, allowing uh, all of my preconceived notions to float away so that I could see reality as it is. And what I saw is we as light workers, we go so far beyond the 3D world that's here. And many of us, like our souls may know what's going on and have absolute clarity, but for us, it can be a little, you know, surprising, confusing, disorienting, and, and we have to like, figure things out. <laughs> so I um, I saw that we need to function the way scientists do when we're going forward with absolute faith on the path of truth. Because like, you know, and again, those of you know me, I used to be a scientist. I have background as a geologist and then a food scientist and nutritional chef. Uh, so I love science <laughs> and coming up with theories and then going forward. So the way a pure scientist works is you come up with a theory. You see something's happening and you postulate upon it. You're like, okay, so I see this and I think that it's because of this. And then you go, you do your pre pure research. When you come to the conclusion that either it's a theory that cannot be proved or it's a proof you know that the evidence lays out it may or may not agree with your initial assumption postulation but when you arrive with the outcome it's a success whether you were originally correct or not you're not going forward trying to prove your theory is accurate you have a theory and the theory leads you on the path of truth to find out what is the real answer. And this is where I went wrong with my friend, Bernice. I went into the situation assuming because she was my dear friend whom I've loved for so many years that she had the same pure love in her heart that I had in mine. And that when she said she wanted to learn prana shakti, she wanted to learn angelic healing, she wanted to learn how to build energetic grids so that she could protect those she love and grow the light on the planet. I believed her. I did not tap in and say, is this the best for all? Well, I would have saved myself a lot of time and money if I had done that. But obviously, I would not have learned a lesson that I apparently really needed to learn. So um, all the time I was working with Bernice, I was like, um, huh, that's weird. Hmm. It doesn't make sense why this is happening. Oh, well, let's keep going forward. Let's keep going forward. So I was getting warning signs. I was getting um, little hints, but I was ignoring them because they did not fit with my preconceived notion. So I was not acting as a pure scientist. I was acting as a blindly loving best friend. And I built all my work on assumptions instead of on reality. So I'm telling you guys this because it's really important, really important that those of us who have insight, who have the ability to guide others, who have the ability to heal, you know, our planet's getting higher and higher frequency. Uh, my peers and I were calling each other all the time saying, oh my God, this is happening to me now. Has this happened to you yet? Um, I had a talk, you know, just last night with a friend who is beginning to walk through alternative timelines. I'm like, yeah, I started doing that last summer. And it's freaky because as the frequency is going up, Time is no longer just linear for us to grab onto. I mean, it always has been more. We just conceived it as linear, so therefore it functioned as linear. 
just like, uh, you know, I teach spoon bending and we used to think spoons were solid and now we realize they can be very melty whenever we want them to be. Um, time, I jumped between eight different timelines. And I'll do a whole other thing on time on that because that's like, I don't want to get us distracted. But you may find yourselves also like suddenly jumping through timelines. Like what the heck is going on? How is this happening? So um, as the dimensions are shifting, well, the dimensions aren't shifting. As Earth's frequency is raising up, our comfort with connecting with the shifting dimensions is becoming more accessible to more of us. So you may find yourselves jumping through timelines and jumping through dimension lines and uh, being in different frequencies in a dimension. Like in our earth here right now, in the 3D, we live a certain way. But there are other beings that exist in another dimension here on Earth with us. And they have a slightly different reality going on, even as they're sharing space with us. Like there may be beings walking through my body right now. I'm not aware of them because they're in a different frequency of this dimension. So, um, you know, but I have become aware of like other dimensional no, other frequency beings in this dimension. And if you want to talk with experts on that, Mary and Gary O'Brien, who uh, channel Czar, who is, that is a collective from a different frequency in this dimension, channels through them. Their website, The Path of Czar, D Z A R dot com, I think. If you Google D Z A R, D as in David, Z as in Zydeco, I don't know, whatever, D-Z-A-R. Uh, they're experts on other frequencies in this dimension. And I love working with them particularly because everything we teach in Prana Shakti, when I talk with Mary and Gary, they teach the same thing with Zar. So it's really cool. And um, lately I've been studying with Garrett Duncan, the awesome featherweight shaman, because Everything he teaches is symbiotic with what we teach in Prana Shakti that connects you with all frequencies of all dimensions through the resonance of love. So here's a little epiphany. Hi, everyone. Thank you for all the hearts and the love. It's so nice to see all these friendly faces here. Hi. Um, so here is a little lesson I received today. Because I was asking, um, talking with the Galactic Collective, how is it that, um, or why is it that, so I had this horrible experience with Bernice that left me exhausted. I mean, by the time I got back from the other side of the country after two weeks of trying to force love and light healing on someone who just wanted to gobble it up, turn it into darkness and send it out in a really bad way. Um, boy, I was hoodwinked. Um, I was exhausted and immediately, you know, Guruji Arun and Priya showed up and we had several weeks of Prana Shakti work and I'm building the online uh, school, the Bonita Woods Wellness Institute online school and and by the time everything settled down, and then I had some road tripping to do, it was like this Monday, a couple of days ago, is the first time I was able to catch my breath and have time for myself since mid-November. And in the middle of that was the two weeks of being sucked dry by someone who, you know, knew that I was an easy tap. So I've spent the last few days meditating and really uh, introspecting. And then because I was able to get very focused, you know, I was used doing Vipassana techniques. It allowed me to open up and go up to the Galactic Collective and go, what's going on? And I was like, why, why do you keep sending me to the etheric surgery realm? I'm learning a lot. And, um, but, you know, what's going on? Why is it when I need total alignment with self and peace of being, you're sending me to a place where I'm developing yet another modality to heal others. And they're like, no, 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 no. 
And by the way, I'm not going to teach etheric surgery, but I have other friends I know who are really good teachers. I will, as I'm going forward with my lessons in the realm, I'm going to start sharing those in little live stream videos so that uh, those of you who are interested can take what I learn and incorporate it with your practices. And I'll try to teach you how I get there. So those of you who are etheric surgeons can, or uh, out of body travelers or out of consciousness travelers can get there on your own. Um, so what they showed me is everyone get ready. Traveling is about to become a lot simpler. They showed me a beam of light and, um, and again, theoretical physics, space-time physics were, was like my original degree at college. So I love this stuff. Sorry if it's boring for you, but they showed a beam of light and even a narrow beam is not perfect. It has radiance. Even if it's shooting straight forward, it has radiance around it. So you have a beam of light that is wide, or you have a light that is wider than the pure beam. But as the beam of light goes faster, it becomes more compressed. It's getting more pressure on the outside world pushing against it. And that also helps push it forward, gives it a little more energy to go forward. And then as it gets faster, it becomes like um, almost super, super compressed. And then as it gets faster, it starts to curve. All right. So those of you who are theoretical physicists or, you know, space time physicists understand what I'm talking about here is is like going a little beyond that. So if you've never seen light curving, here's something to do a little research. Maybe you're not taking light fast enough. If it goes beyond what the speed of light can maintain in uh, like if it goes even beyond that. It gets curved because it's going around the uh, the pressure and the density of space, and then it becomes like little pellets of light, you know, projecting itself because um, it's like shooting itself forward faster than the light can maintain its structural integrity, and so you end up getting little pellets going forward, and then it's going faster than that. It doesn't even bother with the fabric of time. It just shoots to where it wants to go. So the way they explained it is, um, imagine I'm here with a hose. And if I have it like cranked all the way open, I have a really wide spread. And the more I narrow it, maybe put pressure on the hose nozzle, the more, the more it's going straight forward, straight forward, straight forward, and it can go further. But then it's like going as far and forward as it can in a very tight hose stream. Someone goes and steps in front of the hose. If they step in front of the hose really close to it, it just splatters the whole thing. Uh, but if they step further back, the water hits the person and goes around and to some level keeps going forward. Um, so they were saying, think of it that way. Think of that as... Um, you know, there are, there's, so long as we have 3D reality, 5D reality, 20D reality, it's going to mess with anything going forward. And so long as things are going forward, if their goal is to keep going forward, they will find a more and more efficient way to do it, including jumping out of the third dimension and into the 20th dimension to get to their target. Um, and for this, imagine a river flowing down a mountain and it hits a boulder. That river is going to keep flowing. It can flow around the boulder, over the boulder. Over time, it might pick the boulder up and carry it to another location. It might build, you know, a little island around the boulder and keep going. And over time, it may crumble that boulder, wear it down until it becomes porous and then disappears into dust. So they were saying, do not think of reality the way you have been become spiritual scientists, allow reality to become what it is while you are scientifically observing it and expanding the way you see things, you know, just connect in. And also, if you are going forward with your spiritual work and it gets exhausting and frustrating, stop, stop and think about 
what am I doing? What's going on? It, this is not in harmony. So there's something like, you know, a fly in the ointment. If I had done that when I was at, you know, uh, visiting my friend Bernice, I would have maybe saved myself a lot of trouble and not worn myself out so much. So now I'm going up to the etheric surgery realm. I will talk to you about that in other live streams. Um, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> and, and honestly, I wouldn't be doing that if it weren't for the time with Bernice. So this is obviously a lesson I'm ready to learn, but maybe I could have learned it in a less exhausting way if I had been less like determined and bullheaded that I'm on the right path no matter what. Uh, yeah. yeah, we all learn lessons that way, right? By falling on our face and then going, oh, I had to pick gravel out of my face and get up and keep going. Okay, so thank you for listening to my ramble. I really appreciate it. And um, I will catch up with you guys later. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and be open. <laughs> Bye.